Hi, my name is Alexis Smith. I'm a senior housing planner with MAPC, the regional planning agency for the greater Boston region. And we are really excited to be partnering with Arlington on their fair housing plan this year. The plan is still in progress, but today I'm going to talk briefly about a few early lessons that we've learned to illustrate how towns can get started thinking about fair housing. Our first takeaway so far is to look at the data in a different way. Planners are probably familiar with most of the data sources that we're using, like the American Community Survey or the Census, and for fair housing, we're looking at the same data through a different lens. Instead of using it to tell the, the story of everybody in town, we're using it specifically to tell the story of particular groups in town. Uh, protected classes such as race or ethnicity, national origin, disability. And if you're a smaller town, it's also important not just to look at what's happening in town, but also to look at the larger region. Often the issue isn't that there's unequal access to housing within the municipality, but that the patterns of discrimination are much geographically broader. This is common in the Boston region. Essentially, we're asking whether protected classes are more or less likely to be living in certain areas, either neighborhoods in town or in town generally when compared to the region overall. And if a protected class is noticeably underrepresented or overrepresented, that indicates that there's a need to look at the systemic barriers and policy barriers that might be contributing to that difference. Honestly, it can be uncomfortable because when we're talking about fair housing, we're charged with discussing topics that are often avoided or at best alluded to, but this is the place to come out and be really candid about issues of discrimination and segregation. Our second takeaway from the work so far is that you can't, be stick, to, can't stick to the data alone. Uh, first, there are some protected classes for whom there just isn't good data available, uh, but for whom discrimination is a real issue, uh, for example, religion or sexual orientation. And second, because the data really only tells one piece of the story. A protected class might be equally represented in town, indicating that there's not necessarily segregation for that group, but that doesn't mean that there aren't barriers to accessing housing that they need. Uh, we're seeing this for folks with uh, physical disabilities or for households with kids. We started by conducting interviews in Arlington with service providers. Uh, the service providers may not themselves be members of a protected class, but they interact with a broad range of folks who might be experiencing barriers, and that's been a really great way to get an initial big picture. Uh, I would say don't limit yourself to housing providers either. Uh, they're a great place to start, but also reach out to schools, legal aid clinics, health clinics, ESL programs. There's a wealth of information from whoever's active in town. Uh, in Arlington now, we are moving on to conversations with the residents themselves uh, and are working with service providers to approach these conversations in a way that's going to work for the residents. It's really important to recognize that this is a sensitive subject for folks who are often in pretty vulnerable situations and we need to approach it respectfully. In Arlington's plan, we're now using both the, uh, the hard data and the qualitative input to frame our analysis of town policies and possible barriers to accessing housing in town. And we'll ultimately be uh, using that to make recommendations. It's exciting work, and if your town would like to learn more about fair housing, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'd, I'd love to connect with you. Thanks.